Um, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for joining in. Facebook kind of switched me up here. I've got a, uh, a live streaming. Those uh, that have, have switched over, hopefully you found my uh, live streaming page. I uh, got a Facebook page for live streaming. I guess I can call it a business page. So um, I do have that going now. And when I went live, I thought Facebook was going to take me to my regular page, but I, I didn't find my regular page. Um, so my software keeps updating. So that's that's really what happened. So um, I'm going to have to um, get you guys to um, get used to my live streaming page because this is where uh, my live stream is going to go. Um, I don't re think there's too much of a difficulty switching over um, to capture this live streaming, but nevertheless, um, I, I record everything that I um, that I go live with, and then I upload it back um, when I'm through. So um, thanks for joining in. Hopefully, you didn't have that much of a problem switching over. And uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me another opportunity um, to talk to your people. Uh, Lord, speak to me through me. Uh, touch the hearts of the people that are listening to me today. Uh, Lord, touch the hearts of those that are lost. Uh, touch the hearts of those that are hurting. Lord, we know that you are um, omnipotent. So we just want to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, you might kind of notice I'm still a little stopped up. Um, I thought was a cold. It kind of um, knocked me down, but it didn't knock me out. You know, it knocked me down, but it didn't knock me out. Um, but I, I, it's still lingering, but I, I, I thought I could go to the gym last week. My mind said yes, my body said no. So uh, my bones were aching and everything like that. I got to the gym this morning. Um, it kind of like wore on me a little bit, but it's understandable because I'm 62 years old. So, But I did win me a couple games, so, you know. So I uh, got a lot done, and... Um, I'm getting back to normal. So those that have been sick, uh, I feel for you because um, it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling at all. Um, so get well soon. And those that have not been sick, um, eat plenty of vegetables, drink plenty of water, and um, cut down on fast food and um, eat vegetables. You might can, um, Cause I didn't get a flu shot. I didn't get a flu shot. I, I, which I, I, I've gotten it in a while, a while ago, and um, I guess it worked. I didn't get sick, but I'm just kind of leery. Cause after a while, they had a lot of uh, the um, the flu medicine left over, and then here comes flu season again. Now I don't know if they threw out that stuff or got or still used the old stuff before they went to the new stuff. I wasn't going to take that chance. So um, they don't really inform you or say, okay, this is, you know, we got rid of the old stuff. They, you know, so I don't know. All I know is that it used to cost like 30 bucks and then all of a sudden it started being free, which is a good thing. Um, but I just don't know. You know how we black people are. We sometimes, you know, so many things have, have happened to us in the past. You know, the Tuskegee experiment, you know, this, that, and other. The, um, so I just... You know, you kind of have to kind of wait things to your own. So I didn't, I haven't elected to get one. My wife and daughter, they haven't got one um, either. So I just, you know, glad that I didn't give it to them. So, but anything, I'm almost back. Uh, you might notice a little bit. I'm still a little stopped up, but um, thank God I'm on the other side now. So um, it's, it's, it's almost gone. I just want to talk to you a couple of um, um 10, 15 minutes. I haven't been on in, in the, you know, I try to get consistent. Hopefully I can get consistent um, in, in the future. I, I, the last time I was on, I kind of messed up because I, I, I monitor my audio and um, I monitor my audio and I had my, my audio too loud. So I, this time I turned my audio down. So when I do play it back, the audio, I got great audio. I just, just something happened. So for some reason, I just wanted to, um, I monitor my audio, um, so it uh, uh, everything is is uh, I've got good audio now, so so, so I'm okay. So I, I was for those that you know, people like convenience, which I understand that because I used to be on YouTube, 
And I used to inform people that they had to go to my YouTube channel. And that is my YouTube channel right there posted, uh, Larry True to You. So, and that's where I still upload a lot of videos that I do, a lot of um, um, things that I do around, um, I, I do upload them. So, a lot of times when people ask me where is so-and-so and so-and-so, I go to my YouTube channel. So, uh, YouTube is going to grow like Facebook. It's just that Facebook has gotten so much money and Facebook has gotten so innovative that they say, uh, okay, let's do this, let's do this. And YouTube is like, okay, YouTube has YouTube Live now. And I was going to really get on that, but um, you've got to have like a, a thousand, um, what is it, a thousand, I forgot, maybe more than that, videos. I think you got to have a thousand videos. So I don't have a thousand videos. I'm, I'm up to a hundred, a little over a hundred. I don't have a thousand videos, so I'm not, so, but anyway, they are launching down to people that, you know, have whatever, whatever. So I'll eventually get mine and I'll check it out, but people like convenience. And then when I can just go live like this and I'm on Facebook, then, you know, but now you've got to switch over to my live stream and hopefully, you know, you guys uh, haven't had a problem, but if you do, you know, I'm, I'm uploaded anyway. It's, it's really no big deal. But um, I just want to talk to you a few minutes about um, it's tax time. It's tax time, and I still want to talk to you about a couple other subjects that, 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 that has been on my mind. But um, knowing that it's tax time and a lot of people are not vigilant of their environment, um, I just want to just touch on a few things that you really have to be um, looking out for when you um, do your taxes, after you do your taxes, um, to people people that prepare your taxes, okay? Let's take it that you leave an H&R block or, or some tax preparer, and then all of a sudden you feel like, okay, you know, because I don't really know how it goes. You know, some, sometimes they advance you money. I, I don't know really exactly how it goes, but sometimes they'll follow you. They'll follow you. And then when you get in your car, when you go somewhere, they'll rob you. So if you feel like somebody's telling you, oh, when you make a left turn, right turn, look, look in your rear view mirror and kind of see if you see the same car behind you the whole time. Switch lanes left and right. Not on, you know, not plentiful, but just switch lanes. And then if you kind of notice somebody following you, you don't need to go home. You just need to kind of drive around and make sure that that person doesn't follow you. Or else if, if you feel like, you know, drive to um, a police precinct. You should always know where a police precinct is in your area. You should always know whether you, you know, you don't trust the cops or not. That, that you know, you still should always know where a police precinct is. Because sometimes you can ward off a potential um, disaster by just driving in there. Because crooks don't think, they just react. So um, don't ask me how I know that, but um, that's just the way it go. Uh, but watch out for um, people following you. And even when you leave Walmart or Best Buy and you bought a, uh, uh, a big ticket item, watch out for people following you because they will follow you home. Sometimes they will rob you right there. I'm dealing with reality, okay? People are going to take what's not theirs. Simple as that. Okay? So um, let's keep it real. They can rob you right there. It's, it's people that um, has want, uh, wanted to buy a cell phone. And then all of a sudden, I've, I've already talked about Craigslist. You don't deal with Craigslist. Okay? You don't deal with Craigslist. So, um, If you want to buy something, be careful when you leave out. Know your surroundings because sometimes people will case your joint and won't, you know, drive down the street after you, you know, pull up, they're driving, then they'll know because they're criminals. They don't care about going to jail. They, they already have a criminal record. So once they get that criminal record, they feel like, okay, this is all I can do is be a career criminal. There's a lot of career criminals out there. We don't even know about. So sometimes three squares is what they used to. So be very careful because this is the time that they can um, 
get something from you and might do bodily harm. So be very careful because they're out there. Okay. Even when you go to the ATM, I still see people and you, and I'm pretty sure you guys do too. You still see people go to the ATM at night. Why? Why are you going to the ATM at night? Oh, it's well lit, but I need some money. But what happens if one, they have this little, this little card thing up there that they can get your card numbers off there. You don't know. They could be something on there and they could sit across the street. Cause you don't see them in a lot crooks. I mean, you know, that's what they do. So don't go to the ATM at night. And even if you go to the ATM, go to the ATM when it's in the daytime. Know when you might need some cash. But be very careful because um, people, out to, people are literally um, out to get us, okay? They out, they out, they're out to rip us off, okay? Okay, now let's talk about um, being rich, okay? Everybody wants to be rich. I mean, if you don't, that's fine. But I know a lot of people want to be rich. Okay? So, um, if you had a million dollars, let me switch this up here. If you had a million dollars, um, what, what would you do with it? So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give everybody um, a couple of seconds to say, um, what they would do with a million dollars. So, but let me, let me give you some, some people that have been millionaires. Okay. So I'm coming right back to what you believe. And, um, a lot of people are millionaires. Okay. Let's take the music industry. That's what I want to look at. Let's take, um, and I'm pretty sure you, you're going to know everybody that um, I'm going to mention right here. Whitney Houston, Prince, Michael Jackson. Those, that have, those are the ones that have come and gone. Um, I read a bio on Sam Cooke. If you, if you haven't, Google Sam Cooke. I read that I think last week. Somebody put that on. I said, let me Google that. He died early. So this has been going on in the music industry a very long time. A very long time. So if you really want to be rich, when I read about Sam Cooke, he had millions. Then all of a sudden he said, no, I want to have my own record industry. I want to produce my own records. I want to do this. I want to do that. But the white man had other thoughts. See, once, and I think he borrowed money from the mafia when he first started out. And so everybody in the music industry, when you first start out, they give you advancements or whatever, but you don't know where they're getting their money from. See, everybody wants to make easy money. So if you got, if you got a, a, a new artist starting out, and then you, you go to somebody and say, okay, you know, let's go ahead and advance him, him or her, um, hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. And then all of a sudden they got a lawyer that they pay whatever, whatever, he draws up all the papers. So all we want is money. So when we first start out, all of a sudden, okay, we, you know, I'm rich, I'm on the road, I'm making money, boom, 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 boom. So Sam Cook said, no, I mean after he started making money, he said, okay, that's, you know, I'm I mean Sam Cook had hits. Hits. Google it. And then all of a sudden, um, he died. Okay. So let's go back to Whitney Houston. Prince. I never, I thought Prince, all of a sudden Prince, um, got, got a, um, I, I think he got, he was with Sony or something. He was supposed, he got an advancement. He was supposed to put out like, um, 10, CDs or something or albums. And then all of a sudden they 
said something to him and kind of made him upset. He put out his albums, but he put out something nobody really, really liked. And he knew that because he had already got paid. So, okay, Prince, is, he's a millionaire, okay? And then all of a sudden, he changes his name, okay? And then um, he's out of the contract. He started making his own albums or, you know, producing his own, and he got away with it for years. But see, once they have that meeting and your name comes up, or it's, if it's a thumb up or thumb down, you're a millionaire. Okay, those that say, what would you do with a million dollars? I'm getting to my point. I'm getting to my point. Just hold up. Really, this is really, really something to think about because some of you out there rapping, some of you out there are uh, a basketball player, and, you, and, you, and you know, you, you're going to invest some of your money. So um, all of a sudden, he's dead. Michael Jackson. I mean, I literally, I, I was shocked because I just knew um, that we would see Michael when he got old, like us. I was, I think I'm about maybe six or seven years older than Michael Jackson. So um, I just never thought that this would happen. So they're gone. Okay, now let's flip to the new. They're gone. Let's see who's here. You've got Jay-Z, Kanye West, Lil Wayne, and you've got other rappers. Okay? So now, when they first started out, Jay-Z was rapping back in the late 80s, early 90s, something like that. He, started, he was starting to make money. So they said, well, let's take you to another level. We're going to get people to buy your music. Now look at Jay-Z. You don't, he don't even show up unless you're going to pay him X amount of dollars. But he got more money than, than Blue Ivy can spend in her lifetime. But what kind of money is it? Okay. What kind of money is it? He's a millionaire. Blue Ivy, Silver Spoon. Would you want to be... Jay-Z's daughter or son right now? Really think about it. So, and let's, I really hate to bring up um, Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim said, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I want to be one of y'all. So she started doing all this. I, I just, I thought it was a white girl when I saw it. So, but you, let, let me just explain something about the white man. Okay, when you stand on principles, he's mad at you anyway because you didn't go along with his plan, but he respects you. But when you go along with his plan, he respects you less because you, you gave in to him without him really, you really, really putting up that much effort. This country is not meant for us anyway, but if you can find a way to survive in this country, have a good life, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about peace. Okay? If you can, have, if you can find a way to have peace in this life, you're doing great. That's the whole key. Because so many of us come into this country, I mean, are born, and we don't have peace. And we leave very unhappy. So if you can find a way to have peace, you're doing great. So let's think if you had a million dollars and you was a steward of a million dollars. Think about that. You're a millionaire over here, but this millionaire is a steward of a million dollars. I heard this on the radio. I, I, when, when I listen to my gospel in the morning, it's people come on. I listen to Moody Radio. They're out, I, I, I don't listen to them on internet radio. I, Moody Radio out of Chicago. And they were talking about, if you were the millionaire, oh, I'm going to buy this, 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 I'm going to buy this. But 
you saying what you're going to buy yourself. Now you might buy somebody else's, you know, but you, you just said, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. That's for yourself. But a steward of a million dollars is going to bless people. Because once you bless people, it comes back to you. So by the time you get ready to do this, do that, then all of a sudden it's a discount doing this. Or it's a lap blessing doing this. Okay. You see how it is when you give away, you know, just like in the Bible, one, one man said, um, Jesus, I did everything I did exactly the way that, you know, I want to be, I want to be like you. Jesus said, you want to be like me? Sell everything and give to the poor. People that read the Bible, you know what happened. People that don't read the Bible, read the Bible until you get to that scripture. Because it's so easy for me to say what happened, and then all of a sudden, oh, okay, no. But you read, and then all of a sudden when you, because I, I, I had to read the Bible for myself. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, that's what happened. But when you get that, that means you're growing. So if you're a steward of a million dollars, you're going to start giving away that million. And I just, I, I would love, when I see a young black man just walking, see, okay, I'm going to tell you something. What I notice, when I see a black man walking and he's walking with authority, like I'm trying to go this place, then I know he probably trying to get somewhere. But when you got a, a young black man just walking with his head down, you know, really not, that let me know that he's here, he need, he's neither here nor there. And that's really where um, I really wish that I could just swoop them up and take them to uh, some type of uh, environment where, you know, they're sheltered, they're uh, uh, fed the word and just mentor and keep them there for about two years. Give them training. Teach them the word. Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach him how to fish, he'll eat forever. See, that's our thing. We just get a fish to eat for a day. And our young black men, they really don't have no sense of direction because you get it from elderly people. You get it from people that have already been where you're trying to be. So they're just trying to get you there to, to, to where, okay, you can walk on your own. So that's a certain procedure. So if you can find peace as an adult, you're doing great. Because peace is very hard to find. When you walk outside the door, boom, this happens, boom, this happens. And you come back home, boom, this happens. But so if you can find peace, that's great. So I just want you to understand um, about being rich. So you look in the Bible and um, or see if you can Google search in the Bible. Because I listen to the Bible on audio and I Googled, uh, I put rich in, in search. And so many Bible verses came up. Put darkness in, the, in search and see how much Bible verses come up. So. I, I kind of had to come to a conclusion. So what is this life about? Being on earth. Because then with reality, we're on earth. Human beings, black people, male, female. That breaks it all down. So what is our purpose here on earth in this life? If you into the word, it's to bring other people to God's word. Because if we are disciples of his word, when we go, we brought people that can bring other people and other people bring other people. But you know what? There's a cutoff. There's a disconnect. Because I look at when I was a kid and I look at my father's generation. It's always been a black woman in the Bible. It's always been a black woman going to church. And what have what black men have been going through? We've never been a millionaire. We just came into money in the last 50 years. 
I'm 62, so I was 10. So I was born in 54. That's 64. Did black people have money in 64? 74. 84. See, so we just came into money. So you look at where a whole generation is, are trying to be a millionaire. But the devil knows we love money or for the love of money. Let me put it in perspective. But you know what? When I came across this Bible verse, Lord, I don't want to be rich or poor. I just want my daily bread. Because if I become rich, I'll forget about you. So a lot of time when people become rich, when they go to church, you know, praying to God, oh yeah, then they be, you got that break. But God gave you that break. And then all of a sudden, you go to church, well, I've got this so-and-so, so-and-so. You go to church, well, I've got this so-and-so. Then all of a sudden, you don't have time. Same thing, you know, um, that was in the Bible. Don't have time. So, um, do I want to be a millionaire? I want to be a steward millionaire, which I'm already uh, a steward of, of whatever I'm doing. I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for God. So I'm already a good steward. So if I come into a bunch of money, oh, yeah, I'm going to bless a bunch of people because wh wh what do I need all this money for? So all of a sudden, it's, it's going to put me in a whole different mindset. It's going to put me in a different tax bracket. And then all of a sudden, people are coming at me. Uh, can you help me? This? Of, of course I'm going to help you. So what, do I, what am I going to do? End up broke? What? Of course not. Come on. But be a steward of money. Okay? That way, you know whatever God gives you, share. See, this world doesn't, the United States don't have to be the way it is. But it's just to the point that if, the, if people change, then other people, whatever people say, gonna, you know, you, they're, they're going to have a different outlook on them. You this, you this, you this, you can't be, of course not, I can't be part of you anymore because I've changed. Man, he's helping this, he's helping this, he's helping this. Of course I am. So, but when you die, when your judgment day comes, well done, my good and faithful servant. See, a lot of people don't, they don't look forward to that. I do. But I've seen people have left that have been a, a, a fake, good and faithful servant. So I know that I'll see them again. And, you know, we'd be able to sit down and talk. So I, I really don't worry about this life because this life um, is, is not, it's, it's, it's temporary. So, um, I just, I just want you guys to know you, you really want to be a millionaire, that's cool. But if you don't want to be a steward millionaire, that's bad. Because when you give away a lot of your, um, the money that you have, you're going to be blessed. Your eyes, you are read into the Bible. I always, I always say, my motto is open your Bible. Open your mind, open your business. Because if you open up a business and you don't open up a Bible, you've got a lot of things on your mind you're not going to get answers to. If you open up your mind and open up your business, it's still a lot of answers. But if you open up your Bible, you ask God for your answers. Because if you open up your Bible, I will not leave you nor forsake you. So you're really in the wind. Even if you fail, you don't fail. That's, that's the beauty of, of, of God. If you fall down, you get back up. So I, I just, you know, it's just, it's, I just encourage people that um, it's nothing wrong with being rich. It's nothing wrong with being a millionaire. It's being a steward millionaire. So if you, if you got it and then all of a sudden, you know, we was at the game last night. Me and baby girl. And then all of a sudden we were leaving. This young black lady curled all up. Three babies, three babies, and say, sir, can you, you know, give me, you know, I guess she was going to head to the homeless shelter. It was 10 something at night. She got those babies out here. So 
I tell my daughter, I said, you don't know how blessed you are. You got a roof over your head. You're in a nice environment. You're blessed. So I had opportunity and everybody was walking past her. Some people probably, yeah, you can, yeah, that's judging. But the bottom line is they're going to have to go somewhere and lay down. Because usually um, it's like driving a truck. When I was over the road driving, I'm driving. Okay, I'm thinking about, okay, it's getting ready to get dark, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I got to get ready to pull in. Because if I wait till 10, 30, 11 o'clock, I'm trying to get to where I'm going before, uh, closer to where I'm going before I hunker down for the night. And then all of a sudden, when I find a, a, a rest area or if I find a, a truck stop, 10, 30 at night, they full. So that lady had to go get those kids and um, uh, bedded down about probably about six, seven o'clock. So um, she would um, have a place for those kids to stay. So um, she was out there at that time of night with those babies. So um, I just reach into my pocket and just, I, I always call myself seizing the opportunities. Seizing, S-E-I-Z-I-N-Z, -I -I seizing the opportunity. So I just gave her some money. So it doesn't matter if they beg. If you got it, give it. Okay? So um, be a good steward. Because a lot of times we say, well, I don't have nothing. To... It's easy to think like that because I thought like, well, you know, you only got so. But when God blesses you, you say, wow, this only costs so-and-so. Wow, this is on sale. Wow, this is by one. Man, I was in the right place. See, those are your blessings. And then all of a sudden, why don't I have anything? You know, why don't I? Because you're not getting blessed. So be a good steward of whatever you have. Share. You don't have to be like other people because God is, I, you can't touch what God is going to give you. You can only have faith about what God is going to give you. So um, if I want to be a millionaire, I want to be a, a millionaire of a, a steward, a, a, a millionaire, a, a steward of a million dollars. See? So um, I, was, I, was, I was doing some work at the church today and I was, I was uh, walking out. And I've seen all these little black kids, you know, and a lot of them go to daycare, this, that, and the other. And um, just, just a blessing. And then when they get 12, 13 years old, they start to change a little bit. A little bit, child, did you do your homework? Did you do, did you, so, you know, they have to be dealt with a little more. So, um If it's just a single parent mother, it's very hard for her to deal with that, with that boy or that girl. And um, we still trying to do it by ourselves, single parent mothers. And um, they struggle financially, emotionally. So, um, but if you bring that child to church, you won't have, you still have your burdens because a boy going to be a boy at 12. A girl's going to be a girl at 12. But if it's two parents, it's a lot easier raising your, that child. Well, I don't have that luxury. I got to do it. Okay, that's, that's fine. Deal with the business at hand. But take that child to church and you're going to get a male role model. And you're going to get that where that kid knows, okay, you need to do that. Because it's, it's male mentors in church. And church is, is going in a, in, in a different direction. Because a lot of churches are, are um, either not going online, but some of them are going online. So you'll be able to sit in front. If you don't go to church, you'll be able to sit in front of the computer. and Because and, um, you know you, you, your kid's going to be right there. Now, 12 and 13, they're going to be in their own room, you know, isolating themselves. But if you catch them when they're 8, 9, 10 years old, let them listen to that sermon with you. Worshiping is great. You really need to be at church. But if you would take that child to church, take that child to, 
<coughs> excuse me, take the child to Sunday school, you're not going to have the total problems. If any way you can minimize those problems, you want to do that. If a man don't want to stay with you or if a woman don't want to stay with you, you can't make them. I understand that. But you should try every opportunity to raise that child together in the same household. It makes a lot of difference. If not, you have to think about that child. It's not about you and about uh, the father. You have to raise that child to where they'll be able to have a normal life. Remember I said peace? They'll be able to have a normal life because if, if they went through hell coming up, they're going to go through hell as, a, as an adult because they don't know nothing about peace. But if you can go to church, Sundays is just so, um, it's a Sabbath day. I mean, you have to learn about the Sabbath day. But churches, Sunday should slow down to the point where it's nothing but about family. You don't, you go to church, you sit around, you don't do a lot of nothing. So if you can have a type of, of uh, a job where, you know, you don't have to work on Sundays, you're doing great. So, um, but take that child to church because um, the Bible is the only thing that we've got to give us some type of, of peace on this earth. Mm. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. So um, I'm going to wind up right there, but I just want you guys to know daylight saving time is tonight. Set your clock back. I'm, I've, I've already had my nap. You know, I went to the gym this morning, had my nap. I'm refreshed, had me a cup of coffee. So I'm good. I, it, it doesn't matter. You know, some people say, well, you know, I'm going to lose hours. So, so they don't go to church tomorrow because they're going to lose hours. Today. Come on, what's an hour? So it's, to me, it's psychological. Just set your clocks ahead, you know. Get on up. Enjoy tomorrow. Enjoy church. Enjoy the Sabbath day. So, um, but anyway, um, I'll be up for those that have, have stayed on here. That's great. But I'm uploaded um, and, and be able to put it back. I can't. Uh, I love to play my music. That's gone. So I'm, I'm tra starting to get my, my intros and starting to do this, that, and other. So I, it's, it's going to get better. But um, um, the software I use, they, they implement a lot of things. They're really partnering with Facebook and coming out with a lot of different things. So, um, But anyway, I uh, hope you guys have a great Saturday. I uh, hope you guys have a great Sunday. And um, be safe. And um, may God bless you all. Thank you. Yes. Yeah,